really tremendously fortunate because I grew up in a family, and especially with a dad, who saw no conflict at all between science and faith. My dad is a science teacher. For a long time, he was the science coordinator for the Toronto Board of Ed, and now he's a professor at Tyndale University in Toronto. So I grew up with this idea that the Bible is God's written word, but the world around us, the universe around us, creation, is God's express word, and we can learn about God from both of them. And if one doesn't appear to agree with the other, then it's probably because we don't fully understand one or the other or possibly both. And maybe with a little humility and a little patience, we'll be able to figure it out. Because if God made both of them, how could they be in conflict? So this might sound reasonable, but you're right. In the world around us, it's like you, sh you can be a scientist or you can be a person of faith, but it seems really rare to find people who are both. The reality is, it isn't that rare. There are a lot of scientists who are Christians in Canada and even in the States. The head of the National Institute of Health in the States, Francis Collins, he's the guy who is well known for decoding the human genome. He's written a wonderful book called The Language of God, about how studying the biology of the human body led him to God rather than away. At the same time, though, when, when, it, when I wrote a book with my husband, Andrew Farley, about climate change in a Christian perspective, I was nervous because this was the first time that my colleagues were gonna know that I was a Christian because, you know, normally that's not really something you talk about around the water cooler at the, at the lab. So we wrote this book together, um, he being a pastor and me being a climate scientist, and I was nervous about how my colleagues would respond. Because especially down here in the States, there's a lot of rancor in the area of climate science between conservatives and Christians and between the science scientists who do the research who are always being attacked. But I have to say, I was so humbled. My, my scientific colleagues have been nothing but supportive and encouraging. They'll even go out of their way to tell me, you know, I may not share your faith, but I completely support what you're doing. We need Christians on board helping us with this. And even more of my colleagues will come to me and say, we read your book in our church group. And that's the first time I even knew that they were a Christian too. But the flip side of that is really sad. The flip side is the fact that somewhere between about 40 to 60% of the people who attack me, and it happens regularly, it happens every day, on social media, on Facebook, on blogs, on Twitter, letters that I get in my mailbox, emails that I get at the university, about half of the people who attack me are Christians. And they attack me by saying things like, you know, you, you terrible person, you're worshiping the earth, you're not worshiping God. Or they call me terrible names. And they're people who have, you know, Jesus lover or their favorite Bible verse on their Facebook profile. So it's really sad, the polarization that we're seeing between people who love God's word and people who love studying God's creation. That just shouldn't be a divide. We should be working together. In December, all of the nations in the world are going to be heading to Paris for a conference. Now, this conference is one of those terrible acronyms. It is the 21st Conference of Parties. When you see COP, that's what it stands for. 21st Conference of Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. You know, trust the scientists and the politicians to have the, you know, 15-word acronyms. Why is this so important? Well, first of all, it's the 21st Conference of Parties, the 21st time all the countries in the world have gotten together since 1990, when all the countries in the world, including Canada and the United States, agreed to limit human interference with the climate. So it's been 25 years since we agreed to limit this experiment that we're conducting with our planet by producing all of this carbon that's wrapping this extra blanket around the planet. But it's taken 25 years to even be able to figure out what we can do about it. So why is this year different? This year's different for a couple of reasons. Up to this point, developed countries like Canada and the United States have been saying, well, even if we did everything we could, China and India aren't on board, and they're the ones that are really starting to grow and produce more carbon even than we are. Well, guess what? This year, for the first time, China is on board. China reduced their carbon emissions last time for the first time ever. China has a policy in place to start cutting their levels down to what they need to be, and China has become the world leader in wind and solar energy. 
So China and India and developing countries are at the table now. And we actually run the risk of being left behind, technologically speaking, for the first time ever. The second thing that's different is the fact that until recently, climate change has been very much a head issue. It's all about the science, the data, and the facts. Science can tell us a lot. Science can tell us that climate is changing, that for the first time in the history of the planet, it's people, not a natural cycle. Science can tell us that our choices matter, that the amount of change we're going to see in the future and the impacts we're going to experience depend on the carbon choices we make today. But science can't tell us what's the right thing to do because that doesn't come from here. It comes from here, from our heart. And so that's why this conference is so important because we are starting to connect the dots between what they call the furthest distance in the world, between our heads and our hearts. The Pope connected the dots. The National Association of Evangelicals in the United States has connected to the, the dots. They just put out a position on climate change this week. Organizations like World Vision are connecting the dots between world hunger and global poverty and the fact that climate change is exacerbating these issues. We're starting to connect the dots between our heads and our hearts. And so that's why I have hope that things might be different this year.